The topic today is the psychology of justice, the foundation of respectfully real. The psychology of justice, the foundation of respectfully real. We're going to deal with many facets of justice. We're going to be talking about civil justice, criminal justice, social justice, workplace justice, interpersonal justice, intrapersonal justice, spiritual justice, and a special case called the lesser of two evils. Justice is really built on the premise of the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have others do unto you. Or don't do unto others that which you wouldn't have done unto you. We're going to examine how that really is the foundation of the whole legal system. You wouldn't want anybody murdering you. Don't murder anybody. You don't want anybody stealing from you. Don't steal from someone. You don't want somebody bearing false witness against you in court. Don't bear false witness against somebody in court. You don't want somebody violating a contract with you. Don't violate a contract with them. So it's, there's no way to separate out that spiritual principle, the golden rule. It was in the Old Testament called the Torah. It was affirmed again in the New Testament by Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus said that all the laws of the prophet hung on two commandments, to love the Lord thy God with all thy, God, with all thy might, all thy soul, and all thy strength, and to do unto others yet have others do unto you. All the laws of the prophets hang on those two. And he said, I bring you a new commandment to love one another as I have loved you. But all the legal laws that we have today hang on that second one, the golden rule. All facets, we talk the civil, criminal, social, workplace, it all hangs on that. Everything's a, a derivative of the golden rule. The order of the world is actually dependent on the threat and the promise. All world order is based on that. The promise, you do these things, you'll stay out of trouble, you can lead a good life, and the threat, if you do these things, then this will be the consequence. Reward and punishment, it's built in to the world order. Without justice, there can never be world unity. So it's actually the foundation of world order, security, and unity is to have justice. Now, in ascertaining justice, we need institutions of justice. It's not for us as individuals to be able to be a, a, a judge and jury and executioner. We can go to the judge and the jury and then have justice done. So, so the, the jury, the justice system, is based on institutions. So although we can't murder or kill or take lives into our hands, an institution can if it, if it finds someone guilty of, a, of an offense worthy of the death penalty. The institution can. We cannot. Consultation is the essence of justice. <clears throat> what takes place in the, in the consultation process? There has to be ascertaining the facts. There can't be prejudging of what took place. Prejudging, that's where the word prejudice comes from. We prejudge and say, well, a person must be guilty because he's this nationality, race, religion, ethnicity, whatever. Prejudging. So ascertaining the facts is key. Sometimes somebody can look guilty, and then more facts come in, you find, well, they're not guilty. And there must be a determination to seek the truth, to not look through the eyes of other people, but to look through our own eyes and examine the evidence ourselves. And of course, there must be knowledge of the law. There's a guilty verdict. Is that warranted given the law? And sometimes there's even the question, is it a just law? So this is the essence of justice, is consultation. Now, to illustrate the principle of ascertaining the facts, let's look at a, a hypothetical case. A general 
There's three people sitting in front of him. He sends them into certain death in, in a war. He does this in order to save 10,000 troops. He had to sacrifice these three.